All right, welcome back to Self, that's sleep, exercise, love, and food. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, today's topic is, can cutting calories be more effective than intermittent fasting? Now, we know that over 70% of the U.S. adults are considered to be either overweight or obese going on, and we're always looking for effective weight loss strategies. And more so than ever before, there's new medications, there's new diets coming out, but Intermittent fasting has been very effective, not just for weight loss, but because of all of the tremendous things it has in terms of making us metabolic healthy going on. In fact, in my own clinical practice, I'm an obesity medicine specialist and a board certified nephrologist. I use intermittent fasting with all of my patients and in my own personal life going on, and I've had excellent results in both capacities. Now, randomized clinical studies that have been done have shown that intermittent fasting does support reductions in belly fat, improvements in insulin resistance, and improvements in uh, lipids going on. Some of the studies, for example, there was a study, this was a single blind randomized study. They looked at 12 healthy subjects that underwent 12 months of either time-restricted eating or a normal diet along with resistance training. And what they showed in this particular study was that after 12 months, the time-restricted group had significant reductions in body fat, significant reductions in inflammatory markers like interleukin-6, interleukin-1-beta, and TNF-alpha going on, improvements in fasting glucose and insulin uh, sensitivity, and improvements in lipid profile going on. But what's interesting is, is that recently there have been a few studies that have raised all sorts of controversy around intermittent fasting. And specifically what these studies are showing is that time-restricted eating is similar to eating throughout the day. So the most important of those studies was the TREAT study. This was a 12-week randomized control study. It was published in the journal JAMA back in 2020. This was a 12-week study. They had 116 participants. Average age was about 46 going on, and they were assigned to either eat from 12 o'clock to 8 o'clock, or they were able to eat three structured meals throughout their entire day. And what this study showed was there really wasn't a statistical significant difference in weight loss between those that followed the time-restricted eating pattern versus the control group. Now, in the most recent study that's going around and creating all sorts of controversy, this was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. And in this particular one, they were looking at about 547 participants from three health systems. And they collected the data from electronic health records and using a mobile app called the Daily 24. What they had the participants do was the participants would use this app and they would essentially estimate their meal size. So they had three options. If they thought their meal size was small, they would say small. And that was essentially saying it was less than 500 calories. Medium was around 500 to 1,000. Remember, they're estimating. And large was considered to be more than 1,000 calories for the meal they were eating at one time. And then the researchers, they tried to analyze the link between the eating intervals and what their weight was over six years of follow-up going on. And specifically, they wanted to see what was the participant's total eating window? Was it you know eight hours going on like in a time-restricted eating window type pattern? What was the time frame between when they awoke and all the way to when they went to bed going on? And what was the time frame between when their last meal was and when they went to bedtime going on? And in this particular study, what the researchers found was that the time from their first meal of the day to the last meal of the day did not impact weight change. So in other words, for those participants who ate all of their meals in six hours or eight hours, it did not affect weight loss compared to the controls going on. What did affect weight loss or weight gain was that if you ate more frequent, medium, or larger size meals, you had more weight gain. So in other words, if you're essentially eating bigger meals or getting more calories in, you're going to gain weight. That's very consistent with all of the previous studies, so no surprise there. And when you flip that around, if you had smaller meals, less than 500 calories, that was actually linked to decreasing weight. And then the last part of the study that they found that was actually interesting was that if you ate soon after eating and you had an earlier dinner, that was an effective strategy at reducing the risk of weight gain going on. 
some of the previous studies we've talked about on this channel is one of the ways to make time-restricted eating more effective is instead of doing it later on in the evening is to move your eating window earlier in the day. Okay, but if you look at some of these newer studies that essentially say that intermittent fasting is not effective and they create all sorts of controversy and noise, what's the take-home message here? Well, a couple of things. First is intermittent fasting continues to be very effective because what it allows you to do is build sustainable habits. If you can build habits around how you're eating, what you're doing, and you can make those things last, then it becomes a very sustainable way of not only maintaining your weight, but losing your weight and maintaining it. What I tell all my patients in the clinic setting is, is losing weight is often the easier part of the journey. Maintaining is the harder part. And if you make healthier habits, you're likely to have much better success going on. Number two, a lot of people think of intermittent fasting as this magical pill. They consider the idea that they can eat whatever the heck they want, but as long as they only eat within that eight hour window. And that's not what I've tried to show on this channel with all of the videos I've done so far and all of the podcasts. But what the data continues to say is that both diet quality and diet quantity matters. So if you're consuming an excess amount of calories, even if it's in that eight hour window, you're going to end up gaining weight. The idea here is, is when you do the fasting portion, it creates such a metabolic advantage for you, for your brain health, for your gut health, for your heart health, for your kidney health. There's so many benefits going on. In addition to that, if you're looking for weight loss, you still want to cut down calories. Now, if all you're doing is eating processed foods like pizzas and burgers going on in that eight hours, you're not going to get healthier. So if you're watching this and you're wondering what is the take home message today, it's very simple. Intermittent fasting is a tool in your tool belt to do it effectively. You want to do, if you're going to do the eight and 16, for example, you want to do it earlier in the day. You want to focus on quality food. You want to focus on the idea that the overall quantity of calories still matters. You need to get seven hours of sleep. If you watch some of the other videos where I talk about how these really elegant studies show, if you sleep less than six hours a night, you end up consuming 300 more calories the next day. So sleep matters. Exercise is incredibly important because as you lose weight, your metabolism slows down. You want to be able to exercise to help you, one, to stay metabolically healthy going on. Two, it will burn off a little bit of calories going on. And three, it is one of the most effective anti-aging things out there. Next thing is, is you got to work on stress. The more your stress, the harder it is for you to lose weight. And the last thing is, is you have to increase the number of whole foods in your diet. And that's it. So bottom line is, don't let the noise take you away from the actual science. Science is not built around one or two studies. Science is built around hundreds of studies. And being able to piece those hundreds of studies is very important. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions, comments, or another topic you want to hear about, drop it in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.